Hi, I'm Matt. I want to help you get up to speed on what Olama is all about. In this free course, you're going to learn all the different aspects of Olama and what you can do with it. This first video will just get you started in the most basic way. We'll install Olama, verify it's running, download a model, try out a prompt, and find and download another model. It's not going to be everything, but that'll come as the rest of the course is released. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is visit the olama.com webpage. You can also get to this by going to olama.ai because all the cool kids have .ai URLs. Okay, let's take a quick look at what's on this page. At the top, we have a link to the Discord. You can join and ask any questions you have, and you'll probably get a decent answer. GitHub has the source code and documentation for Olama, which you can review. But if you have an issue with Olama, it's best to keep the questions on the Discord and not the GitHub issues. GitHub issues are for actual problems in the project and not really support issues. Start out the question in the Discord, and if you need to escalate, GitHub is a great place to go. The search box will let you search for both official models and user contributed models. We'll talk more about models soon. Next to that is the link to the community models. Since I'm logged in, you can see my username on Olama. This is all model related and we'll come back to that. Down at the bottom, we can see a link to the docs, which is just a folder on the GitHub. One other interesting link is to meetups, and these are events held around the world with the Olama team. Keep an eye out. There may be one close to you at some point in the future. So right in the middle is a link to download Olama. Click that to get three choices, Mac, Linux, and Windows. I'll go into more detail on this in another video, but just choose your platform and follow the instructions. I'm on a Mac right now, so I'll click the download button and then run the installer. So once it's installed, there are a few different things you can do to ensure that Olama is running. The easiest is just to run Olama run Phi 3. That's Phi as in P-H-I and the number three. The reason I chose that model is that it's short and easy to spell and small so we can be up and running quickly. You probably don't have the model, so you'll see it download the various layers of the model. You'll learn more about layers later in this course. If you're on a Mac or Windows and the Olama service wasn't running, just running Olama Run will start up that service. If, however, you're on Linux and the Olama Run command fails, you may not have the service running. You can refer to this page to get a little bit more information about how to get it started. It's always best to let the service run that piece rather than running it locally in a command prompt that you start. So at this point, you may still have to wait a little bit longer for that model to download. So let's talk for a moment about what a model is. A model is made up of a number of pieces, the biggest of which is the weights file. This is a collection of nodes and they have connections between them called weights and biases. Those weights and biases combined are referred to as parameters. A node is often a, a concept, maybe a word or a phrase. And when the model is trained, the parameters connect each of these different concepts together by different amounts. And sometimes they get a little closer and other times they get a little further away as the model is trained more and more. Two nodes won't just have one weight between them. They might have many combinations of weights depending on the context of what the node does. Although it feels like magic, this is how much of the world's knowledge can be stuffed into a relatively tiny little file. How big that file is depends on how the parameters are represented. When the file is originally developed, it's probably going to use 16 or 32-bit floating point numbers. These can be incredibly big and precise. But if we group those numbers into smaller sets, we can abstract them down to much smaller numbers while retaining an incredible amount of precision. The most common amount is four, and that's what's referred to as four-bit quantization. There'll be a more advanced video in this course that goes into a lot more detail about quantization in the future. When each parameter is represented by a 32-bit number, LAMA 38B, or eight billion parameters, will take roughly 32 gigs of VRAM to run. Because there are eight bits in a byte, four bytes parameter, so 8 billion times 4 adds up to roughly 32 gigabytes. There's some extra overhead as well, but that's the simple way of calculating it. 
If we quantize to four bits per parameter, that gets close to four to five gigabytes of VRAM required, which is a whole lot more accessible. There are a few other components to the model and we'll cover that later in this course. So after all that, your model should be downloaded and Olamo will have dropped you into the REPL. REPL is a coding concept and means read, eval, print, loop. This is a place that you can enter some code interactively and it'll be processed right away. And in the Olamo REPL, we can enter a question and get it answered immediately. So try asking a question, why is the sky blue? And within a few seconds, the model will spit out or generate an answer. The answer is streamed out token by token. A token is a word or a common part of a word. And there are a number of factors that go into how long that generation will take. You can continue the conversation and the model will remember much of what was said, limited by the size of the context window that the model supports. Often this context size is 2048 tokens by default in Olama models, but that's easily modifiable. If your conversation goes longer than 2048 tokens, the model will start to forget the earlier parts of the conversation. And if you restart the CLI or REPL, that entire history will be wiped. Often users will work with Olama through a third party UI. Open Web UI is a common one, as is Misty and so many others. One thing some of the UIs offer is better ways of leveraging memory so you can continue those conversations for longer. We'll see that in future topics. Now, back at the command line, type slash buy to exit out of the REPL. Let's go to the olama.com website and click on models. Right now, the list of models is sorted by featured. Try sorting by newest. One of the more recent models at the time of this recording is intern LM which attempts to be better at math and math reasoning. That's not actually saying that much because models tend to be terrible at these things and aren't the best tool to use. Thankfully, it's also good at all the usual things models do. So click on the link for intern LM. We have a few bits of info on this page. First, there's a short description of the model. We see how popular the model is as well as how recently it was updated. Then there's a dropdown with different variants of the model. It defaults to the most common one, which will be a four bit quantized model. To the right is the command to run to get this model. Below that is the hash of the model and the overall size. Below that, we see the various layers of the model. There's that layer term again, and there will be more on that later in this course. In the dropdown with the different tags or variants, find the one that is 7B chat V2.5 Q2 underscore K. So copy the command to run this model and paste it into the terminal. If you're still running phi three, then type slash by to exit and then run that command. You'll see it download the model, which is a bit larger than the last one. When it's done, try asking what is a black hole. And soon after you will get an answer describing a black hole in a way that's a little different from phi three style. But what's most incredible about this is that this one has been quantized from the original 32 bit floating point number to a two bit quantization. You will usually see much better answers from the four bit model, but it's pure magic that this even works at all. While we're still in the REPL type slash question mark, you'll get a list of all the commands you can run. Then try typing slash question mark shortcuts. This shows us different keyboard shortcuts you can use in the REPL. Though I still prefer exiting with slash by. So exit the REPL however you prefer. Now type Olama LS to see a list of your two models. Olama PS will show us which models, if any, are currently loaded. Models stay in memory for five minutes by default, and several can be loaded at once, depending on your hardware. We'll look at concurrence in more detail in a future video. If you wanna remove one of the models, you can use Olama RM and the model name. There is so much more you can do with Olama, but this video is already long enough. Watch out for the next video in this course coming in the next few days. If you have any specific questions about what's covered in this course, join us on a brand new Discord that you can find at this URL. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.